folks, uh, my name is William. I'm a main framer since 2008. Uh, during this time, I had the opportunity to work as console operator, batch operator, system programmer, and also with infrastructure in Poland and in Brazil. So uh, today I have prepared a presentation uh, for our community here and would like to share also uh, online with all of you. So I've always noted that one of our biggest pain is with the newest professionals. They they don't want to work in with mainframe and I think that may maybe because they don't know they don't know exactly about mainframe. There are some myths that uh, uh, are present in, in their culture, and I want to to break down that. So I listed here some of the most common phrases uh, I'm used to hear, and let's try to break that. Mainframes are dead. I want to tell that if we compare with some other technologies or with some uh, online products or let's say with what is cool tweet per second how many tweets per second do we have we have about 7,000 tweets per second well that looks that looks a big number right but if, if we go for Facebook we have um, about 15,000 likes per second this number continues to increase and if, if we go for uh, the Google search we have per second around the world 6,000 Google search per second all of that looks impressive but when we look to the mainframe even if we say about the kicks we have uh, about 1 million transactions running per second and that's because it is around us but we don't maybe we don't know what it is there if you if you use your credit card or your online banking system mainframe is present um, so I can't say that mainframes are that let's see the second myth mainframes are expensive really if you go for one box okay the price looks really impressive and that may scare you but look for what you can get from this and if you compare for example uh, how many the cost for transactions that you can have here in mainframes and distributed systems uh, the cost for transaction on distributed systems they are it depends on the transaction obvious but it is more or less 70 percent expensive than the transactions running in the mainframe the legacy systems mainframe aren't the legacy systems you can for sure have something that was created 50 years ago and I think that that should be a, a fact for you to, to feel happy that this is still running on the current platform but uh, day by day we see new technologies coming on the new generations of the mainframe on the 14 you can have uh, the real data run encrypted not just uh, the data that is on the disk is encrypted but what you have in the memory you can have encrypted and you have every time more present the Java language on the mainframe also, the DevOps culture is coming to the mainframe, so it's not a legacy system, not at all. And mainframe is out of the cloud. Later, you can check uh, on the references, but one fact that uh, that I really thought interesting in my search for this presentation is that the the number of if if we look for mobile apps, about ninety percent. Uh, are accessing data on the mainframe. That is really impressive. The last but not least, mainframe is boring. How can someone tell that this screen is boring? I, I really like that. Okay, okay but if the, the rest of the people don't like it, let's see what is coming. 
and that is what this presentation is focused Zoe. Zoe is an initiative from the mainframe open project uh, to make the mainframe more open. So if you are interested, uh, there is a community on this Slack that you can participate. There are uh, the page here on the, for the mainframe project where you can, uh, for example, create your app and try it on the mainframe or get a trial for the Zoe. And from here you will find documentation about it. So how to download documentation, how to, you can participate on that, how to get it started. And Zoe extends for Z, uh, referencing the Z, so the platform Z. Uh, o, that this needs to be open. And we, that is familiar, that is inclusive, so that's why uh, the Zoe. And this has uh, three major uh, features. Uh, the first I will show here is the graphical user interface. So now as a single web page, single web app, you can uh, log on the mainframe and work like you were working on your machine. So you have a desktop, you have apps running uh, simultaneously there and our accessing through the browser. To show that, I will connect in our environment I have access here. just for us to be able to taste uh, how the Zoe looks. So the name of this graphical user interface uh, is the looks. I was already logged here, but... So, there are here some apps running and all of that can be accessed like you were in your machine. So, for example, uh, if you know the 3270 terminal, you can just come here and log into the test. So, through here, you don't need uh, any more to have it installed on your machine. You can just access this uh, web desktop and work from here. While I'm logging in, I will show you have here the menu. So, you have some samples of Angular, React apps that you can try here and work with your own. You have editor, so like visual code. And this is really looks like a desktop and it's running on a web page. So, it makes more attractive that this, that's, this is screen, right? I'm assessing that just to show that you can have it also here. You, Uh, the second thing, we have uh, the API mediation layer and what I noticed about this feature is that this works like a gateway. So let's suppose you have multiple APIs and with different signals and uh, you can concentrate off that here uh, with Zoe and you will have multiple possibilities just keeping in one single place. It has some functions for auto discover and the last but not least, that is uh, that will be my focus on this presentation. So is the CLI. If I come here, uh, I will edit this connection, and if I just type Zoe, you will see uh, some description about the options I have here. You can. Uh, issue comments to console, work with files, jobs, CSOs, USMF APIs. And I have uh, just for trial, let's issue a comment using the CLI. And there we go. We issue the comment and we get this, the answer. And this is working using uh, Node, some scriptings, and the USMF APIs. And this brings more. Uh, cloud-like uh, environment for for the new professionals to work with that and, and this opened a lot of possibilities uh, to work uh, with mainframe, automate some tasks, work with DevOps, uh, continuous delivery integration and you can also have it on your visual code. I have mine here and I like it, so I don't need to go to the ZOSM 
to the TSO anymore. I can just come here, type the data sets I want to see, and it will bring for me. So, for example, I here have my PDSs, and I can access the members inside of it. I can uh, edit it, I can delete it, and I can save it. That's, that's awesome. Uh, I already showed the, the, op the options uh, for the CLI. And let's think now. Uh, you have Node, you have uh, the CLI here ready for you, and you have other languages that may fit. I made here some examples using JavaScript, I like JavaScript, and with simple tasks just to show uh, the power how useful that can be. So, there are three examples here. The first I will show is the hello world. And this uh, is a sample of JCL. So for me, to don't have to be updating, creating a new JCL every single time. I have here this is skeleton, and I have a script to generate this for me. So I provide a configuration here to a JSON, the JavaScript object notation, and using npm. I will generate my JCL updated and I will allocate, uh, I will submit this job. Let's let's try it. So what I need to do, I will start off inside of this folder and I will use my npm script to submit. As we can see, it will first use the gen JCL using and will build uh, my custom JCL. So now instead of the variables, I have here the configuration for that. After that, uh, the Zoe uh, comes in and it will submit the job and will return for me a job ID, condition code, the job name, and the status. With all that I need here on my machine locally. So I have my cards, I have JCL, I have the message for execution, so I can see here the my condition code, and I can see that the data set was uh, successfully allocated. So there we go. And if I check it, I will be able to bring this to my screen. Or it can just uh, use a comma to separate them, and there we go. Here is my, it's empty. I don't have any members inside. Uh, another situation that may be really frequently is uh, when you are working with data sets on the mainframe and this data set is full. So you need to allocate a new data set and you need to copy over all the members and then uh, you're gonna need to rename them. So I have created here my example uh, for out of space and how that works here so i'm taking the JC, the data set name let me just go inside of this example first sorry okay oh, out of space and with that i will use a split of rex with the data set name and this is here So it basically will list the dataset and will take the information uh, about this allocation. Uh, with that, I will update a job, a skeleton of job, it is here, to uh, copy the members to a new dataset with the double of the primary allocation. So I'm increasing uh, the primary extension. And once I have it, I will rename this dataset uh, to backup and the new to the current. Let's see how that works. So I will use node and let's think, let's try with this AO2A356lib node. So node increase size and I will pass the dataset name. So once I started, the Rex is created, 
it goes to build I make the upload we're using the Zoe and after that I get the configuration I execute these regs and I get the configuration and the job is submitted now if I refresh the names here I will get the backup and the current so here is my script and there we go so we are uploading uh, the regs for that I'm using a feature of the Zoe so Zoe files upload my file and how will be the name of it I mean using another command for the Zoe to execute this to send the TSO command to execute these regs and finally uh, I'm preparing my template JCL to submit and create a new one I think that's awesome uh, this is for sure a simple example but let's imagine that you can do uh, this with uh, a bunch of data sets or any other functions that are really repetitive you can use node like I, I like node so I use node but you can use bash you can use any language you want and interact with the CLI uh, for those that are more familiar with the mainframe you know that we have uh, some special list of data sets that we call up APF and sometimes when we are installing a new product we need uh, to put this data set on this list and there are some command and this is uh, wow come on uh, I can say that's a big command and I need to uh, remember the syntax so we can simplify that so for example I have created here an, uh, the example for that where uh, let me go to that, that folder where I will take uh, from the user uh, what is the data set where is the volume or uh, where this is located I will check if it, this is already in IPF or not and if not I will put this in the IPF depending if the user passes the, as the volume or not okay so let's try node APF and I will use it here um, my data set A0283 so if I don't tell that this is uh, the specific volume it will understand that this is an SMS it will start the process the data set was a PF. Nice. And if I try again, uh, when uh, the, what we will be able to see that this is already a PF. So it will not repeat the comment. Uh, those were some examples that we can, what we can do with uh, this. Uh,